in a market that's up, tech, tech market's up, you know, the overall market, the Dow's down, but the tech market is up. Amazon is off, and the reason is there was a ruling by the Tennessee uh, Attorney General that Amazon does owe tax in that state, and that could have long-term implications for Amazon, as you know. There, um, there's a lot of pressure on Amazon to actually uh, collect sales tax in states where it has a physical presence. Obvi uh, evidently, it has a number of, of physical distribution centers in Tennessee, so the stock is down about 3%. So some other news that uh, yeah. I thought I would share. So, so um, Mark and Hopkins just handed me some of the news. Really, today's big story is um, we are live from Oracle Open World in San Francisco, California. This is SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv's extensive coverage with Inside the Cube, our flagship telecast. We're in San Francisco where they're shutting down the streets for Oracle Open World, where 45,000 people converge and to talk about technology, the computer business, mobile, big data, cloud. But in Cupertino, California today is the announcement of the Apple iPhone 4S, iCloud. Apple had a big announcement. Um, uh, people were expecting the iPhone 5, didn't happen. People were expecting Steve Jobs, didn't happen. Um, so, I'm not, not surprised that Steve Jobs was not there given the recent step down as CEO, Dave. And also, uh, Steve Jobs doesn't do the marquee events where there's no real announcement. So, um, people don't remember, but they might not remember, or might remember, that Steve Jobs did not go to the iPhone launch with Verizon, uh, mainly because that was an interim product so when uh, Apple announced the iPhone for Verizon, what people don't know is Jobs didn't go. My speculation from what I'm, sources that I hear here is it was basically the wrong um, antenna. So they hence they had to jury rig the um, um, capability to get the CDMA and GSM combination designed to work. Now this iPhone 4 is completely retooled for GSM, has two antennas and CDMA and it has iOS 5 on it, which is available on October 12th, 1080p video with image stabilization and noise reduction. Um, it's got the two antennas and iOS 5. So major upgrade to the iPhone 4S. This will be a complete retooling that will bridge the gap to the iPhone 5. Most likely they probably wanted to hold off some of the big features of the iPhone 5. Um, and I felt maybe they probably didn't want to call this the iPhone 5. Probably wasn't worthy enough from an upgrade standpoint, Dave, to call it an iPhone 5. Um, that's the big story. So do any of those uh, features change your mind? The 1080p video, I use my iPhone a lot. I use Justin TV's social cam. So obviously Justin TV is our, uh, our home for broadcasting. Um, and uh, Justin Kahn and Michael and the guys over there uh, develop a really cool app called Social Cam, which I use a lot. And I use it on my iPhone, it's phenomenal. Um, the video capture is great. I mean, there's no zoom, but it does a great job. Um, and so I do use it a lot for video, so I might want to do that. My only concern that I need to look into is the video storage. So 1080p obviously throws up huge file sizes, so the issue's going to be, you know, will that really hurt me? 64 gig, uh, 64 gig of storage on the iPhone. So, you know, I mean, that's, not, that's nothing to shake a stick at, but, you yeah. know, if you're doing 1080p video, 64 you know, gig goes fast. 64 gig could go fast, so, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, Apple's been so good about making these things so that people stuff the hard drives. I mean, you look at what they've done with the iPhone and iTunes, they encourage, you know, a lot of downloads of apps. So it's an hour of video uh, market, 1080p. We, it's what maybe 16, 16 gig. Does that sound about right, um, Mark Hopkins? Um, I mean, we, we get that's um, a, you know the, the spotlights that we do are about an hour. They're around. I mean, people could do people could do gig. a terabyte uh, with this stuff. So, so you're talking about maybe four or five hours, at 1080p, maybe you know, less than yeah, 10 hours yeah. of video at 1080p. Okay, so. Um, Parag Patel from VMworld, uh, VMware, was on. What did you think about that? I mean, he's obviously he been a great, great Cube uh, yeah. alumni, um, but he covers the alliances, and that's a big part of the growing part of VMware. I, I appreciate his candor. I mean, we asked him some tough questions about, you know, the EMC ownership. Uh, is there a cartel? I didn't use the word cartel, but that was the implication. Um, you know, why aren't they commoditizing hardware more aggressively? Um, you know, and he answered. I think his answers were fair. Um, I do think, by the way, uh, that there's no doubt in my mind that there is influence over VMware from EMC, that they are in a position to um, try to influence them, get the APIs early, allow them to get to, uh, the one thing I disagreed with them, John, is I, I think that the smaller companies don't get the APIs nearly as fast as the big guys. Um, at least that's the case in, in storage. Um, and so, but it is what it is, and I think e VMware has to balance 
uh, its competitiveness in the marketplace with uh, you know, that dynamic. What do you think about Oracle Open World? We're here inside our Cube, our flagship telecast on SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv, um, live uh, broadcast of the most important events. We're going to do multi-day coverage. We're into day ones in the books yesterday. Today's day two. Um, what do you think about the vibe here at Oracle Open World? We well, had the chance to, to mingle last night at, the, at some of the uh, networking events. What's your overall that, well, experience? that's where I was going to go, John. What's your we, insight? We were at one event last night for the utilities industry and, and it was packed. We're talking about 300 executives, you know, most in suits. And these, these are guys that spend many, many millions of dollars you know, with Oracle, I mean, they, they, they sign two, three, four, five million dollar deals. This is an industry that's transitioning to smart meters and Oracle is powering that. And, you know, that to me, that event that we were at um, underscored really the, the nature of Oracle. It's a belly to belly, high touch, high price, high margin, high stakes business and Oracle is winning. And that's, yeah. to me, the essence of this event. We had a chance to go, you know, to go to a bunch of other events, uh, more, you know, bigger networking groups last night, and I had a chance to talk to some folks uh, from Java One as well. We had a chance to swing by um, a bunch of a bunch of people talking, and the hallway conversation to me, Dave, that I would share with the group out there from a coverage standpoint, it's not being talked about on the mainstream press, uh, is a couple things. One, Oracle's. Uh, focus here is about performance, integrating hardware and software together, um, and the benefits of being purpose built, not general purpose, but purpose built. The second thing is the the clear absence of mobile. There is no mobile. Um, there's no mobile at all, and there's no, I mean, there's no real discussion of mobile, unlike SAP, what SAP did in mobile. Um, and three, Java One is absolutely doing a great job, and it's across town um, in. San Francisco, at the Hilton Hotel and other venues. So Moscone in downtown San Francisco, where we are, is Oracle Open World, but going on just across a few blocks away is Java One, and Java One is really got a lot of traction. The vibe from the people I talked to today was that they're excited, and it's the open source is driving a big part of that, and we heard Red Hat yesterday. Yeah, I think that um, we had talking to theCUBE yesterday about what Oracle has to do, and one of the things that came up was they've got to simplify, and here we are in this world of mobile. Apple's the most valuable tech company at, 333 billion in, in market cap. And you know, the fact is that Oracle really doesn't have a cogent mobile strategy, at least has an articulated one. Um, and here's a day where uh, we're seeing Apple expectations very high, the stock was up ahead of the iPhone 5 announcement, it never happened, and now Apple is now testing you know, new lows on the day. It looks like it's going to bounce off at 360 here. Um, so another buying opportunity, according to my colleague John Furrier, and I, which I, by the way, I agree with. I think Apple is going to continue to, to thrive. But here we are in this world where mobile is becoming you know, the most important marketplace and you don't hear anything from Oracle on mobile. There's a pavilion here, a mobile pavilion. Uh, there are six vendors, I think, showing. It's, not, it's sort of an eclectic mix. You got Jabber, you got you know, Verizon. Okay, I'm online now. I got, just got internet access, Dave. Uh, <laughs> Excellent. Uh, All right, we're back up and running. It's, it's good, it's, it's, uh, it's well, good to have you back online. Well, let's, let's talk about what the most impressive news of the day is today. Obviously, we're here at Oracle Open World, Dave. San Francisco, California, uh, streets are shut down. I think the big news is, you know, San Francisco rarely shuts down these events at this level, and um, they've done it for World Series, they've done it for, um, you know, C uh, Oracle, but, you know. The mayor was on stage uh, you know. yesterday. With yeah, Mark I heard, mean, and uh, so, and and he was sucking up to Larry. Let's let's basically. What it well, was. I mean, the, so. Oracle spending some serious money yeah. downtown. I mean, the, everyone's making some you know money left and right. I mean, people you know signage money, is money everywhere. Money talks, BS walks, but, as but, they say. But San Francisco in the past ten years has transformed. When, um, over the past five years, I've seen the city of San Francisco move from, you know, a some areas that were underdeveloped to absolutely robust. If you look at what's going on south of Market in in um, this area, it's just absolutely exploding. Twitter, Zynga are the biggest tenants here, and. Uh, oh, I'm looking at this camera right here. Thanks. Um, biggest tenants here, and the, the scene is moving. Silicon Valley used to be the, the, the hotbed of tech exclusively with some work up in San Francisco, had some financial services and some, some, some media, but for the most part, San Francisco now is a home of developers. Cloudera's got an office in San Francisco. Um, big developer scene up here in San Francisco, and uh, it's booming. So to shut the streets down is incredibly challenging. 
Uh, people are sitting in traffic, and it rained yesterday in San Francisco, which is very rare. We got soaked walking in between events. Um, so that's the big story here at Oracle Open World. It's a zoo, it's great, 45,000 people. Top news is obviously Apple, down in Cupertino in Silicon Valley, where Apple's introducing the iPhone 4S and uh, iCloud replacing Mobile Me. iPhone 5 is not being announced, so breaking news there, no iPhone 5. So is iCloud now shipping with the? With, iCloud with, will with, replace Mobile Me with all kinds of features. Find your iPhone, find right. your friends, integrate it into iTunes. So you're going to see iCloud really converge in with iTunes and then apps. Is it available now though? October um, 12th. Okay, very shortly. Yeah. Uh, I was expecting it later in the year. It will be available. iCloud will be available with iOS 5 on October 12th as Apple reported today. Um, the iPhone 4S is what was announced today, not the iPhone 5. And essentially the 4S I would call it a mini five. It's not really a true new product, but it's an absolutely retooled iPhone 4. Um, what they mean by that is you got dual antennas for GSM and CDMA. So from a carrier standpoint, iPhone now can have increase their sales breadth by increasing the mobile, platform, mobile platforms on the carrier side. So that's good news for Verizon customers. Great doesn't, news for Verizon doesn't customers. Doesn't make any difference to AT&T customers, AT&T correct? is GSM, so that's a completely different animal. Yeah. This gives iPhone more optimization because if you bought an iPhone on Verizon, you're screwed because the old version was really not optimized for Verizon. So this one here, if you're a Verizon customer, you're going to be completely stoked to have an iPhone 5 with the new GSM uh, and dual antenna, GSM CDMA antenna. Also, graphics. You know, we're doing live streaming here on Justin TV. They got an app called Social Cam. Um, with the iPhone 5, you got 1080p video. They've added noise reduction and image stabilization, which is great. The other thing on the retooled iPhone 4S is a dual, dual core processor, uh, two times faster than the iPhone 4, and a dual core graphics processor, which is seven times faster. Um, so, a very respectable upgrade very worthy for buying. I mean, to me, I buy it like that for the video and the pic camera. I really don't care about the Verizon, but if I want to switch, you know, it gives me the option. I'm on a fully, my plan with the iPhone, I'm not locked into AT&T, I'm not under any contract, so I can switch at any time, so, you know, I can't wait for the day when we can start switching between carriers, because ultimately, if I'm not happy with coverage, I want to switch without breaking the uh, plan. Well, one of the reasons why a lot of people stuck with AT&T was the international coverage, right? Um, and now this, this, this dual mode addresses that, does it not? Or yeah. Am I mistaken? Um, well, you'll still need the SIM chip to go in the carriers, but yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah. You'll, so have the, you'll have that now, capability. I want to ask you another question about iCloud. So iCloud is, is for iOS only, so I'm not going to be able to use it with, like, for instance, Lion? Don't know. I'll have to ask the guys to research that. From what I'm hearing on the reports, it will work. Yes, it, it will, will okay. work. So that, you know, that, that's, that's key, right? Because that's what people used mobile me for, even though mobile me was horrible. It was a terrible user experience. But it so was Apple's, right dominate, Apple's dominating the news here at Oracle Open World. The big story is um, some M&A activity. A startup called Gluster was acquired by Red Hat for 135, uh, $136 million. Uh, that was announced uh, yesterday. Fusion I.O. announces their new memory platform, second generation I.O. memory platform. Uh, that's going to be uh, pretty compelling news. Uh, and we're, again, here at Oracle Open World, they're continuing to roll out uh, new stuff. I don't know uh, what, you, what you saw there. Uh, Dell uh, made an announcement today in the keynote. Uh, Michael Dell announced the integration with uh, Oracle's cloud management system. We're going to have Force 10 on uh, later. We'll ask yeah. them about that and, and what that all means. You're we, seeing the guy in the chat room says, uh, just to interrupt you, you guys are Mac users, question mark. I thought you guys knew your tech. Yes, we know our tech, um, but we had no internet down for like uh, just now, so death never on Justin. Uh, thanks for that comment. I'm a new um, Mac user, actually, so uh, I, I've, you know. I got my I've, iPad. I've still got uh, uh, a lot of windows in my DNA. I just got a new, new Mac here. So go to siliconangle.com and check out all the coverage. Siliconangle.tv is where you'll find all of our on-demand videos. Um, look under featured, hot, most popular, and newest. Um, go to wikibon.org, Dave's site, where you'll find in-depth industry research uh, around cloud, storage, mobile, big data. Um, really, really good site there, so check it out if you're into the big data. So I think Death Never, actually, John, is saying that um, as Mac users, we're out of our minds because uh, we should be, I guess he's saying, we should be Windows users. I don't know, I was a Windows user for many years. And I don't, did, did Death Never just re, uh, hear my rant on Microsoft? So. Very happy so. to be <laughs> a Mac user. Stuff just works, and like you said, never had a virus, knock of wood. Okay, why don't I just uh, 
take a break and tell everyone, you know, thanks for watching uh, on Justin TV and SiliconAngle.tv. We really appreciate the, uh, the stay tuned with us. We're going to be here all day today, all day tomorrow. We're here at Oracle Open World to provide insight and opinion. Uh, Dave, the stock market's down today. Apple stock is down. Um, I expect that to yes. rebound. Overall. So the Dow is down, the industrials are down, tech is up, Apple's down. So um, tech is good. Dow, it's October, Apple, people are bummed out, no iPhone 5. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I expected the iPhone 5, as did a lot of other people, so we'll see. All right, so. Um, What's our schedule look like? So we've got, um, the next guest is uh, uh, Mikhail Kofstrand, uh, who comes from Dell Force 10. Now Dell acquired Force 10 uh, recently, this year. Dell is building out a pretty impressive stack, John, I have to say. I mean, here's Dell, a company that was you know, living off of whatever it was, you know, very low gross margins, 10, 12% gross margins, maybe even lower at times, in the PC business, had a dominant model for a number of years, and then fell out of favor. The thing is, they had a ton of cash, and what Dell did is they went out and they, they started to acquire key assets, and one of the areas that it focused on was storage. Dell got into the storage business with, with a great partnership with EMC, and it worked out wonderfully, for, certainly for EMC, and even Dell made a lot of money on it, but Dell realized that by owning its own IP, it could drive margins. You we're seeing that with Oracle. That's really the big theme that Oracle has had over the last several years. What Dell did is it went out and bought Equalogic, it went out and bought Compellent, it bought Oak Arena for uh, 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 data deduplication and, and, and compression. It just recently bought a networking company. So it's got servers, it's got storage, it's got networking, and of course it bought Perot Systems, so it's got a services play. So it's got a really nice, robust stack. Dell can do some serious damage, folks. I tell you right now, Dell has been living off of gross margins below 20%, and now it's getting into a business that is the realm of EMC and NetApp, for instance, where gross margins are, in, in, in Cisco, where gross margins are 60% plus. So Dell is thrilled with 30% gross margins, you know, 35% gross margins, nearly double what it's used to. So Dell can do some serious damage, and I, and I guarantee you Dell is, is, is going hard after that small and mid-sized business. They're going to lower pricing, they're going to leverage its, their supply chain. I'm very impressed, uh, John, with what Dell has done. Someone, Apple's website is down. Breaking news, Apple's website has been crashed. Apple.com is not responding. That just came across our, our Justin TV room. Uh, <laughs> I don't even want to say your handle's name, but it's a good, it's a little bit, uh, you know, not rated for television. But um, Apple.com, go to Apple, Mark, if you can go to the website. Uh, can you bring up Apple.com and pull it up on the screen? So this is a rare occasion. I want to get a screenshot of this. Apple.com is crashed. Um, since Steve Jobs stepped down at CEO, all things are going to hell over at Apple. Okay, I say the stock is plummeting right now. Apple's stock is plummeting uh, as we speak, mainly because the Apple.com server is not responding. Yeah, so it's, it's now down below its low of the day. It was bouncing off of 360, it bounced off of 360 twice. It's now down at 356. Can you pull it up, Mark? Cents. And uh, put you it can on the see screen. that can you, for you technical Can you put wants, the Apple uh, website on the screen? For you technical wonks, you can see that it, it, I'm looking it's at the monitor. The okay, barrier. so Apple is denied. You do not have permission to Apple. So Apple.com, this is a, a the first time in my life that I've ever seen Apple's website not functioning. Can you, can you go to Google Finance and, uh, <laughs> and pull up the Apple chart? Now, can you just leave that up there? I want to leave that up there, Dave. So uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's not switch, please. Um, this is a rare occasion in history because uh, <laughs> Apple rarely fails. Can you refresh that? So, uh, it's still down? It is down. It's down. That's, uh, it's you do down. not have that, permission. That is not Oracle's crummy wireless, Oracle Open World's crummy wireless. That is Apple's site being I think, down. I think folks. Apple has a problem um, with their uh, breaking news. Apple's site has crashed. Um, apparently the demand for the 4S is so strong that Apple's site is crashing, the stock is plummeting. Stock is in a free fall. It's down nearly 19 <laughs> points. It's broken its uh, This guy got back in, so we, they're back in. So can you try again? Sites yeah. back up. It's, look at the stock. Since the Apple site went down, the stock has just become like a rock. You can see, Mark, where it, it, it drops below its lows of the day. It was trading, it's, it was testing 360. You can see it's bouncing off of 360. Apple's still lines down. To the right, and then boom, the like a knife dropping. So. Okay, look at, I mean, this is, I think Steve Jobs is going to have to come back as CEO because, man, ever since Tim Cook took over, stock's plummeting, site's down. 
Next thing you know, they're going to start increasing prices on t on songs. Revolt. So, so it takes real guts to buy into a down market like this. But John Furrier, please. The down line. Well, I mean, let's yeah. just talk about uh, Apple for a second. Um, could not get into Mac, so he couldn't. So he did. Good to be. Good to me. Be good to be me. Uh, on Justin just said he could not get in. I got to look at Apple. Apple stock is plummeting. I don't know why. I think people are disappointed with the iPhone 5. I personally think they're crazy. The iPhone 4S by the specs that I just reported and what we're seeing is damn good product. I mean, a retooled iPhone 4S is damn good, especially if you're a Verizon customer or a non-AT&T customer. The video is going to be killer. Social Cam, if you don't have that app yet from Justin TV, go get it. Killer app. Great for video. Uh, you can follow me. I got all my kids' clips on there, but uh, my stuff's pretty boring. Um, if you look at uh, other news today, for the, if you're interested in Apple, Zune by Microsoft has completely been cr killed. So, you know, Apple, again, kills another competitor. Um, but the site is down. That's going to be headline news in, like, seconds. So you see the news wire here. Yeah, so... Um, Apple is dominating the news today, uh, all kinds of, of stuff. I mean, the, the iPhone announcement itself would have been huge news, and now the, the lack of the iPhone 5 dominates the news. Now iPhone, or Apple's site being down, is more fodder, more fuel for the fire. Um, and you can see it's taking a toll on the, on the stock price, down almost 20 points on the day. Um, you heard it here, John Furrier says it's a buying opportunity, folks. Not after the site crash. I say sell, baby, sell. It's a sign of weakness. The website is down. You know, there's an old saying on Wall Street, the first disappointment is rarely the last. Yeah. So we Maybe, saw that today well, you know, in we, real time. Yeah. As I throw stones at Apple's site for being down, we were down for 40 minutes yesterday on SiliconAngle.com, so I want to tell everyone I apologize for the uh, downtime. Hurricane Electric got uh, pounded with um, massive hack of all time. Hurricane Electric, pretty good firm, rarely gets hacked. So, yeah, serious, serious uh, failure if they got hacked. So let's pull up, uh, is Apple still down here? Yeah, so we're here live. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE, Wikibon's flagship uh, telecast from Oracle Open World 2011. Um, theCUBE is our live mobile studio. We go to all the tech shows. We've been called the ESPN of tech. We want to cover all the news. We want to cover the angles. Uh, of these big events, uh, we're really focused on the enterprise. We've been to a number of events this year, uh, places like EMC World, VMworld, HP Discover, we went to Dell Forum uh, down in uh, Orlando, uh, Citrix Synergy, SAP Sapphire, um, and we're here at Oracle Open World. We'll be at Hadoop World in November in New York City. Yep. Really looking forward to yep. that show. Uh, we were at Strata earlier this year. so. You know, covering all the angles, trying to do a, a great job for our audience. Really appreciate everybody watching out there. Um, also, shout out to our team. You know, it's certainly not just John and me. Mark Hopkins is here. Uh, uh, Key and Tran, uh, working the tech, working the the creative. Thank you guys for for doing such a great job and, and making sure that we have sound and synchronization. And also, back at the Silicon Angle and and and, and Wikibon offices and you know throughout the United States, we've got. Uh, on numerous writers that are live blogging, they're watching the stream. Um, now we got some people asking on the chat here about the iPhone 5, uh, they're confused. Don't be confused, the iPhone 5 is not being announced by Apple. It's the iPhone 4S, a completely retooled iPhone uh, built from the ground up with two antennas, one for GSM, which is AT&T, and CDMA, everybody else. And so those are the two formats for, for the mobile uh, RF side of it. Um, it has 1080p video, so Social Cam, the app from Justin TV, is going to be phenomenal on that. Eight megapixel camera, uh, iCloud replaces MobileMe on October 12th, um, dual core processor on graphics and core processor, two times faster processor, seven times faster graphics, and so you're going to see a lot of upgrades in that area. Um, noise reduction, image stabilization, solid upgrade. So if you have an iPhone 4, and you're happy with it, I'd keep it. If you got, uh, you're interested in getting the iPhone 4S and you want those features, it's totally cool. I think it's worth it. I'm going to buy one. So. Aha, uh -huh, okay, yeah, you're in. I decided I'm in. I think the 1080p. You're in, I'm in. The 1080p, <laughs> 1080p. Well, gets I tell you, it. I'm going there anyway, because I got, I got an older iPhone 3. So let's get back to Oracle Open World. This is uh, SiliconAngle.com's continuous coverage. SiliconAngle.tv is where the videos. I'm John Furrier, I'm the founder. And I'm here with my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org, research firm in Massachusetts. Uh, this is theCUBE, our flagship telecast. 
when we go out with an anchor desk format, and we cover the most important tech events going on um, in the industry, and we do everyday coverage. We go live, we go in-depth. Nobody does what we do. We're the only ones doing in-depth live coverage with analysis and insight. And here at Oracle, you can't get this in, uh, information anywhere. The, the coverage has been sparse on the blogs. Um, we have all the insight and coverage here. Obviously, Oracle has Oracle TV, but that's Oracle's propaganda. You can't really trust that. Um, so, uh, we're independent. We're going to give you our opinions. Dave, let's start with you. Your opinion of Oracle uh, right now, starting with Larry Ellison's keynote on Sunday. Take us through yesterday. What's your opinion of what's going on here in Oracle? Give us some insight. You know, I, John, I agree with your assertion that it was not the greatest keynote uh, that Larry Ellison ever had. I think that uh, at, at the same time, you know, Oracle, as I've said, puts its money where its mouth is. The company throws off tons of cash, $12.3 billion in free cash flow over the last four quarters. Uh, it is spending money on R&D. It is executing, integrating, changing the game with its Exadata product. Everybody is responding to that. You've seen EMC uh, acquire Greenplum, IBM buy Natiza, uh, Teradata making some moves with Astrodata. Oracle has changed th that game. And it's now um, getting into the Hadoop business. It announced a Hadoop appliance. Uh, it's talking big data. So Oracle has the market power. Whenever some new trend comes out, whether it's virtualization, uh, big data, cloud, Oracle will say the right things, make some moves, freeze the market, and keep people on its platform. Here's, in my opinion, Dave, I would agree with that, but the big story for the folks out there to really understand is, is that Oracle is the 800-pound gorilla in the tech IT business, the enterprises, the companies, the people in, that you're employed by, and they, they're in almost all of them. They're in the top 20 of everything, but here's what's going on with Oracle. Last year at Oracle Open World, which we did, he brought the cube here, they talked about the cloud. Oracle was going to move from this proprietary, box-driven database to cloud solutions, cloud in a box, as they said. This year, there's not so much talk about clouds, but hardware performance and analytics, big data. Oracle is all about big data. Everything around this show here, the booth space, all the vendors, the ecosystem, all the companies we're talking to, and behind us here on the ground floor, are all talking about big data. And what that means is, it's real-time analytics, the real-time web. The Apple announcement today highlights the fact that we are living in a world where mobility, and real-time access to information is the number one uh, demand point for users. And that's what it's all about here. You're hearing it from us, that's the insight, and Oracle is absolutely going to make a big play. Now, like you said, they're not, a, they're not a pioneer, they're followers. So expect Oracle to use their muscle to come in and own the big data like they're trying to own cloud. And the question is, can the startups, can companies like VMware and EMC and Microsoft and Intel continue to pace up and build that innovation? And the third thing is open source. Open source continues to be a thriving, thriving part of our ecosystem in this, in this economy. Oracle owns a big part of that with Java and MySQL, with unstructured databases. Can Oracle, as you said, freeze the market? And that's going to be interesting to watch. I don't think they can. I think the market's too strong and the current is going to flow around Oracle. And that's kind of something that we're going to watch. And will Oracle try to land grab or will they try to roll with it? And so, um, we, yeah, let's, so, let's talk about that, and then let's go to Mark Hurd, who's uh, going to uh, go on a clip there. Yeah, so how did Oracle get so powerful? Oracle was founded in 1977. One of the co-founders was, of course, Larry Ellison, and they developed a relational database management system to really automate back offices. And that's what happened through the 70, late 70s and the 80s, and, and, and there were a number of companies, Oracle and Informix, and certainly IBM with DB2 and Sybase, and, and, and IDMS with Cullinet, and Oracle, survived that shakeout and is thriving. And then what happened is in the 2000s, Oracle started buying up application companies like PeopleSoft and others. And now it is the 800 pound gorilla, yeah. John. And, and I think, you know, to your point about freezing the market, Oracle can freeze its own market. Can it freeze the entire market? Maybe not, but it certainly can maintain its footprint within its customer Well, base. let's go to a clip from Mark Hurd, and then before we go there, Mark, let's talk about the, the other story that's the undercurrent inside the Silicon Valley world where I live, and that is the war between Oracle and HP. HP obviously is under huge uh, pressure. Their CEO stepped down, uh, Leo Apoteca are under forced out by the board. The board's in turmoil. The company's doing extremely well uh, in the operating divisions that are HP, um, but prior, prior to Leo Apoteca, Mark Hurd was the CEO of HP. He was forced out by the board. He became a, the president here at Oracle, and he's Larry's number one right-hand lieutenant. And let's hear what Mark Hurd has to say on his keynote, where he's on stage and he talks about specifically what he's going to do to turn the Oracle machine into, uh, into taking over HP or other companies. 
We don't, there's no audio? Uh, okay. Okay, so Mark Hurd is here. We have no audio, just got to note. So that's Mark Hurd on the screen. Mark Hurd is obviously uh, president of Oracle. He used to work at HP as a CEO. He's credited with turning around HP's performance, um, which was disaster when Carly Farina was uh, uh, trashed HP as a company. Mark Hurd came in, cleaned up her mess. Um, uh, but apparently, as I report on SiliconANGLE.com, Mark Hurd just stayed a little bit too long, cut a lot of um, muscle out of the bone of HP, down to the bone, and then um, was forced out by the board. And then they brought Leo Apotecker in, and, uh, and then uh, <laughs> he was forced out. So HP's in turmoil. Mark Hurd is an operational guy. He's over there leading Oracle. Uh, Dave, what do you think about uh, Mark Hurd? And, and uh, some of the things he's going to do here at Oracle. Well, Ellison said it was the dumbest move since Apple fired Jobs. Um, you know, Heard. I, I think Heard was good for HP in that he got HP's act together. I think you and I have talked about this. He cut, he cut to the bone, um, and I think that hurt HP. Uh, but I don't think you can really, you know, blame Heard. Frankly, I think, you know, HP's made its own bed, and it's uh, you're seeing some of the mess now manifests itself. So, um, and I think, you know, great pickup by Oracle. From all accounts, Heard is an outstanding manager. He's very customer driven. He's out there in the field, pressing the flesh, you know, very driven, which you have to be to be, you know, in Oracle management. And um, that guy's got street cred, right? I mean, he, he clearly has street cred with Wall Street. Uh, with customers, and so, you know, great pickup by uh, uh, We're Walmart. getting some people in the chat here, Dave, just to interrupt you, uh, we're going to, they're asking some questions. The iPhone 5 is not coming out, um, so, and the live feed is not available anymore by CNN or CNBC, whoever had it. Um, we do not have a feed there. Uh, we are, we have reporters on the scene doing work, uh, getting all the data, and we share that to you on siliconangle.com. Uh, and also on Twitter, at, uh, at SiliconANGLE. Uh, the other breaking news today that's interesting for the folks out there who love Apple is that their website is down, okay? And, uh, and the rumors are going around that essentially Microsoft, a group of pro-Microsoft hackers, hacked Apple. So obviously Zune was very popular amongst Microsoft hackers, and the death of the Zune, which was announced, confirmed today. Um, Not true. There's a strong rumor going around that pro-Microsoft hackers hacked Apple. If you pull up the Apple screen, you'll see that Apple.com is no longer functioning. Um, the world is crashing. Apple is down, losing. It's back up. Okay, just must have came back up because seconds ago, mine's still down. Okay, so there we go. Apple is up and running again. Um, Apple has been crashed for, that was a good 20 minutes. Oh, the stock's back up, Dave. It bounced off its low. <laughs> it's, just, okay. it's creating new support at uh, <laughs> the Apple. The Apple, the Apple stock is directly related to the website, apparently. It, the, um, it, it actually looks it, very similar. To yeah, that. just just bounced up, literally. Um, I don't know if anyone out there can, uh, on, on Justin TV, who's on the chat with us, could share with us if they can get to the Apple site. If you can just ping us on SiliconANGLE's uh, chat here, tell us if you can get access to Apple.com. Yeah, we're inside um, of uh, are you, can the Moscone. You, can with, you get Apple? We're inside of Moscone with lousy co connectivity. Apple yeah, stock is see, plummeting. The, you can see the, the real knife there when it, when it went below 360. It was right about the time that its website went down. It bounced off the low uh, right about the time when the website there, went Apple's up. Apple's up. So yes, the, the Apple website is back up. And the stock is not doing well today. All In right. a market where tech is doing well, uh, Dow is down, but tech.